In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate a technique for visceral restriction assessment, specifically the local listening technique. Local listening was a term coined by Jean-Pierre Barral, a DO in France, and is a technique that can be used to assess for subtle motion restriction in the viscera within the peritoneal cavity. We're going to start with our patient in a supine position, and we can, as a physician, stand or sit. We want to make sure that the table height and chair height are appropriate so that we can be relaxed and appreciate any kind of subtle motion restrictions. We're going to position ourselves facing the head of the table with our dominant hand towards the patient. We're going to take that hand and we're going to make contact with the heel of our palm superior to the umbilicus. So feeling my patient's umbilicus, I'm going to place my palm superior to that and I'm going to let my fingers rest in the abdomen, pointing towards the head. Now here, I'm going to be gently layer palpating through the abdominal wall, through multiple layers, through the skin, through the adipose tissue, superficial fascia, muscle, transversalis fascia, and then through the peritoneum, into the potential space of the peritoneal cavity. And in that space, I'm going to be attentive to feel any solid structures that may be there. So now maintaining this gentle contact, I'm going to allow my hand to relax, and I'm going to be attentive to any kind of motion that I feel across the surface of the abdomen. Now, this is not me inducing motion. Instead, this is more of a passive palpatory process similar to appreciating cranial sacral motion. So now that my hand is resting here, I'm going to appreciate and identify any direction that I feel the palm of my hand pulled in. And I'm looking for any tension that pulls at my palm, not my fingertips, and I'm going to be trying to follow the initial direction of the forces that I feel. So the first direction I felt my hand pulled in was up to the right upper quadrant, superior and lateral. So I'm going to allow my hand to follow that motion until it stops. So now that I felt it stop, I can lift my hand and reposition at that end point with my fingers again pointing towards the head parallel to the midline. Now in this position, I'll try to appreciate any additional motion. And I do feel as if my hand is pulled again into the right upper quadrant, a little superior and lateral. So I'm going to follow that motion until I reach an end point. Now that I've reached that end point, I'm going to lift my hand, reposition at that end point, and again, try to appreciate for any additional motion. And I can reset and redo this process until my hand has finally reached a resting position and I don't feel any pull across the surface of the abdomen anymore. Now, I don't feel any additional motion that would cause my hand to glide across the abdomen. So now I can shift my perspective, being attentive to the depth of the pull of tension. Whether it's superficial, whether it is towards the middle of the abdomen, or whether it's down deep towards the retroperitoneal space. And I'm appreciating a pull towards the middle of the abdomen. So now that I have that information on hand in terms of the direction of the pull, the depth of the pull, the final position of my hand, I can begin to develop a differential diagnosis based on the viscera that is located in that area. So in the right upper quadrant, that could be the hepatic flexure, the liver, the gallbladder, the small intestine, duodenum. Uh, the kidney might be a little bit too far posteriorly into the retroperitoneal space. So I take that information and I use it in the context of my history and the rest of my physical exam to give me a better sense of what uh, specific visceral restrictions may be present.